Please welcome the stage, Doug Smith! Hello, everyone. How are you? All right. Thank you. Um, my story starts on uh, September 20th of 2010. Uh, pretty chill night so far. Bought some weed, strolled through the East Village, watched some, watched some friends on a comedy show. Now it's 10 o'clock. I'm uh, about to head back to Brooklyn. And I, uh, I walked down the stairs of the 2nd Avenue F train station. And a woman passes me fleeing the station, sobbing. And I don't really think anything of it. I go continue down the stairs. I swipe my card, go through the turnstile. And I hear another woman screaming. And I'm like, what is going on? Is this like season finale of The Bachelor or something? I have no idea what I've missed. <laughs> uh, and I look to my right, and it's a petite, young, blonde woman, early 20s, and with her is uh, a light-skinned black guy about my size, maybe mid-30s. And uh, he's groping her, grabbing her ass, seemingly trying to rip her clothes off. And I was like, well, this interracial couple is into some aggressive foreplay, but uh, he seems a little bit more into it than she is, but none of my business, so I'll let him be. And then he takes her by the shirt, and he just whips her against the wall, hauls off, and just clobbers her right across the jaw. And she definitely was not into that. And I was like, I don't think they're together. I think this guy is a rapist. He starts trying to rip her pants off. And I was like, somebody's got to do something. Nobody's doing anything. I got to do something. I, I've never been in a fight in my entire life. I was like, this is going to be my first fight. A guy that is not giving a second thought to beating the shit out of a woman in public. I was like, all right, everybody watch as I die a hero. <laughs> So I yell out the most threatening thing I can think of at the time, which happens to be, hey, buddy, that's a lady. <laughs> he's punching her in the face, and I'm yelling at him like he's using offensive language, right? <laughs> like he's going to be like, oh, my God, you're right. It, I, that's the last time I leave the house without my glasses. So I yell out to him once more, and this time I, I up the ante quick. I just beat my chest, and I just go, come on! Which is a, that's a pretty big jump from, hey, buddy, that's a lady, right? There's several steps, like maybe you pick on someone your own size, or I'm telling might have sufficed. So he sees that I'm not going anywhere, so he takes his hand off of her. She goes running out of the station. And he squares off to face me. And this is ordinarily a very busy station, but at this precise moment, it's empty. And he's just staring me down with these steely blue eyes, beautiful eyes under normal circumstances, I must, <laughs> I must add. Quite seductive even, but at this moment, they are just cold and terrifying, and he's just staring me down, and he takes his first step toward me, and he just goes, what you gonna do, motherfucker? And I was like, all right, this guy is clearly winning in the crazy department. I got to out-crazy this guy. So I started screaming, back the fuck up, man. Back the fuck up. But that tends to lose its impact when you yourself are the one fearfully backing up. <laughs> so I hit the opposing wall. I have nowhere to go. And I step in, and I just swing for the fences with a punch that I am sure is going to level him. And it probably would have if I was not still eight feet away from him. <laughs> so there's this horrible moment where we're just both watching my fist whiz past his face in slow motion as he winds up. He steps in, hits me, wham, my knees buckle a little bit, but I don't go down. I come back, kick him in the stomach, and here's what I know about my fighting, st my, my fighting style so far is uh, I'm way too polite, I can't land a punch, and when I kick someone, I make this sound. I go, eh. <laughs> But I make contact. He bolts. He goes running out of the station. Now I'm feeling like hot shit. I'm like, man, I just, I just won my first fight. I was like, I didn't back down. I took a punch. I didn't get to hit him. That was a little underwhelming. But 
I think I just won my first fight. I was like, I'm the first guy with a mustache to save a woman from train tracks. <laughs> rather than tie her to them, right? So I'm feeling great, and uh, I'm about to get on the train, and a woman getting off the train goes, oh my God, sir, you have a massive laceration on your face. And I was like, what, is it bad? She goes, oh, it appears to be quite severe. <laughs> I was like, all right, doctor. And I looked down and there's just a cascade of blood just pouring down my jacket. And I don't feel any pain, just warmth. And time stops for a second as I just replay everything in my head. I was like, yeah, that guy was kind of holding his hand in kind of a funny way. I do think I saw so like some sort of a glimmer. I was like, fuck, I didn't win a fight. That guy had a blade, he just splayed my face open like plastic wrap and escaped. So first thing that goes through my head, oh my God, now I have AIDS. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a shit about the cut, the blood loss, the scar I'm gonna have. I think some spiteful psycho running around the city with an infected blade just stabbed me in the face. Now I just have AIDS blood coursing through my veins. And I'm like, you know what, this is good. I'm bleeding it all out. At one point I actually <laughs> lean over, I'm like, get rid yourself. Get out. And this angel woman grabs me by the shoulder. She goes, what are you doing? She stands me up. She reaches into her purse, grabs a lot of napkins, slaps them on my face, because apparently every woman in their 30s has a surplus of purse napkins, right? <laughs> so she goes, come on, let's go. She leads me up to the street, calls 911, dozen cops on the scene within minutes. And then I remember, oh shit, I got that quarter ounce of weed in my backpack. <laughs> And then I start to panic, because I was like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna bring me in for questioning. I don't know if they're gonna search me. I was like, I can't have my first fight, my first stab wound, and my first arrest in the same night. That is too much. So I got my napkins on my face, and I just start sidestepping my way to the nearest trash can. And I'm not gonna take the napkins off my face and lose another quart of blood, so my, my plan is just to back my way up to the trash can and just unfurl the whole thing. Just dump the whole bag and make a clean break. <laughs> but then I'm like, hold on a second, all these cops, I told them what happened, they're all patting me on the back, calling me a hero. I was like, if there's any ever a time for a cop to find weed and look the other way, it would be now, right? They'd probably roll a joint and light it for me at this point. <laughs> like, smoke up, champ, you earned it. Now, they all want to see the wound, by the way, so uh, every cop that comes up to me is like, hey, you mind if I uh, take a look? So I reluctantly peel the napkins off my face, each time losing another quart of blood, and every cop has the same reaction. They just go, oof. <laughs> now, keep in mind, I still haven't seen it. I have no idea what it looks like. I know it's not all the way through. I can't, like, poke my tongue through, but I know it's bad enough to make New York's finest sick to their fucking stomach. <laughs> Ambulance finally shows up and paramedics wrap my head, my, my whole head in gauze, like one of those <laughs> cartoons from the 30s when someone has a toothache. <laughs> and they rush me to Bellevue. I get a bed in the emergency room immediately. They page the plastic surgeon. She shows up and she is just the ultimate porno MILF doctor. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous woman. Like, you know, bookish, like, you know, glasses, hair in a bun. But you know when she shakes that hair out, it's just boner city. So she starts peeling the gauze off my face and as she peels the last sheet of gauze off my face, the curtain parts, it's my wife. The cops called her, gave her a heads up what was happening. She sees me, just starts bawling. So now I have my wife on one side of me holding my hand, telling me how brave I am, how much she loves me. I have this porno doc on the other side of me, <laughs> stroking my hair, telling me everything's gonna be okay. It's the closest I've ever come to being in a threesome. It was. <laughs> Even as I'm getting string yanked through my face, I was like, this is fucking fantastic. <laughs> so she's stitching me up and two detectives show up and there's like one 6'4 hulking black dude and one like 5'2 meatball of an Italian dude. <laughs> and he's the mouthpiece and I swear to God, he sounds like he's in a buddy cop movie. He just goes, uh, he goes, Dougie, how you doing? None too good, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Listen, this is Mo, I'm Rocky. Uh, you want us to catch the bad guy? I was like, wow, you guys talk like that? This is great. 
So I give him a description of the guy, and they come, he comes back 20 minutes later with a bunch of mug shots. I pick the guy out immediately, same as I remember, those beautiful blues, <laughs> uh, gaunt, crazy looking, and he just goes, don't worry, we're gonna catch the bad guy. He takes off, surgeon finishes stitching me up, I listen to a lot of rap music. I, I uh, hear a lot of references to a buck 50. Now, a buck 50, for those of you that don't know, is a facial laceration that requires 150 stitches. And this right here, from my sideburn to the corner of my mouth, that's 23 stitches. Which makes me wonder, what kind of fucking facial laceration <laughs> requires 150 stitch, like decapitation? What is? I was like, oh, we'll just sew your head back on. You'll be good to go. <laughs> the next few days are a mixed bag because I'm getting all sorts of texts and phone calls, a lot of people calling me a hero, which I find pretty hilarious at the time because all, apparently all it takes to be a hero is cock-blocking a rapist with a box cutter and losing the fight. <laughs> and uh, so I'm getting all these hero compliments, but I'm in excruciating pain. I can't... I can't talk, I can't eat solid food, even just like sipping protein shakes through a straw is excruciating. So finally, I, I start to lose my mind. It's been four days without solid food. I finally cave, I order Chinese food, I get wonton soup, egg rolls, sesame chicken. I can't chew it, so I just throw it all in a blender. <laughs> in a one completely inedible Szechuan smoothie as I'm trying to slurp this disgusting shit down, I get a call from an unknown number and in one of the only instances in my life, I answer it and I say, hello, and I just hear, Dougie, we got the bad guy. <laughs> Turns out it's a 51-year-old homeless guy with no priors other than panhandling and public intoxication. And that was a bit of a blow to my ego because I went from thinking I won a fight against my physical equal to knowing I got my ass kicked by an old wino. <laughs> but uh, I got the guy and uh, I get my stitches out a few days after that and here's where things take a dark turn. I'm uh, brushing my teeth one night and I notice like a clear fluid coming out of the scar. And I'm like, oh, it's just residual wound goop, no big deal. Keeps up for a few days, I finally go back to the doctor, they do an MRI, and they find that when the guy cut me, he hit my salivary gland. So I'm now drooling out of the side of my face. <laughs> Not a little bit of drool, like buckets of drool. Like you put a plate of wings in front of me, I'm just a slobbering St. Bernard. It was so bad I could push on the gland and shoot it across the room. <laughs> Which, that would have been a great defense at the time of the attack, right? I'd just be like, back the fuck up, man, back the fuck up. So the doctor says, uh, he says, give it two weeks. It's very likely it may heal up on its own. If it doesn't, we will have to reopen the wound and tie off that duct. So now I'm in hell. The slashing was nothing compared to this because I'm just, uh, I feel terrible about myself. I'm a dog walker at the time, so I'm just roaming New York City, drooling all over the place. <laughs> the dogs are looking at me like, oh, he's one of us now. <laughs> and my quality of life just goes down the shitter. I just, I just feel completely defeated. My depression is just spiraling out of control. I went from feeling like a hero to feeling like a freak. I was like, I should just see if Coney Island is hiring any new recruits. I'll just be the boy with a super soaker face go off the grid, lo live under the boardwalk in a puddle of my own saliva. I was like, this, now it makes sense. I was like, this is the kind of horrible shit that makes people go insane, slip through the cracks, live on the street, and punch women in the face. I get it now, this is, I feel sympathy for this guy now. So I finally find a solution for sopping up all the drool, but you definitely do not feel like a man when you have a maxi pad stuck to your face. <laughs> But that's what I did. That was the only thing that worked. So I felt like I could have been in a commercial, you know, like hold your head up high knowing you have the ultimate protection of always. <laughs> but like some guys are like embarrassed going to buy maxi pads for their girlfriend. Totally different ball game when you go into CVS, you're like, these are for my face, right? <laughs> so doctor called it though, the day before I'm supposed to go in for surgery, 
It stops, heals up on its own. I go in to see him. He goes, yep, you're good to go. All you got is that nifty scar. It's the week before Halloween. He's trying to lighten the mood. He's like, hey, you got that, you got that scar now? Let me guess. You're going to go as the Joker for Halloween. And I was like, well, the Joker has this scar on both sides of his face. So in order to go as the Joker, I would have to go out and stop a left-handed rapist. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, I think those are difficult to come by, right? <laughs> Finally goes to trial, and uh, the girl that I jumped in to help, she never showed her face again, never filed a police report, never, never, never showed up. She was just MIA completely. But this guy still gets hit with two counts of assault. And one of them, remember that girl that was sobbing, fleeing the station as I was walking in? Turns out he punched her just moments before I showed up. So between clobbering her and trying to chop my head off, he gets sentenced to 15 years. So he's currently doing time. So I imagine him right now, probably sober, probably hitting the weights. And I've been hitting the weights myself <laughs> because I am truly terrified that in 2025, I'm gonna have to do battle with a shredded 66-year-old looking to finish the job. <laughs> So, thank you guys so much. You've been a, a real treat. Good night. Thank you.